Hey, thanks for joining me on the channel today. Well, I've got a very special guest and we are going to be talking about RV electricity. It's been two years since we got our leisure travel van and one of the very first upgrades I did was to install a Lithionics 315 amp hour battery, a 3000 watt inverter, giving us the ability to run everything in our coach off battery, including the air conditioner, and that has changed our RV life. I would not RV any other way now. It has spoiled us so much. An awesome, awesome upgrade if you are considering this. Now then, who has uh, been my guide along the way? And basically everybody on the Facebook forums and the Sprinter forums um, guide in order to upgrade their RVs, and that is Sandra Johnson. So Sandra's gonna jump on here in just a little bit, and we are going to be talking about RV electricity and answering questions that people have sent in about big batteries, big inverters, uh, how all of this works. And so if you're into this, you're going to love this episode. But before you do that, if this is your first time here or if you have yet to subscribe, please do so. Hit that subscribe button, the little bell, and also give the old thumbs up. Really helps the channel grow. Really appreciate all the interactions everybody does on this channel. Now then, as we get started, um, we, we talk about lithionics batteries in this. That's what Sandy uh, has and believes in. It's what I have and believe in. And also as a disclaimer, my company, Pagosa Supply Co. is also an authorized dealer, the go-to source for leisure travel vans for Lithionics. So as soon as somebody mentions they have a leisure travel van, Lithionics sends them our way to help them get their coach electrified with a big battery like the Lithionics 315 and the new, which we're going to talk about, 660 amp battery. So really excited about that. But then if you're interested in that, you can just head over to pagosasupply.co slash lithium and all of the information is there. But without further ado, let's jump over to uh, the video podcast that we filmed yesterday with Sandra Johnson as she answers your questions about lithium. All right, here we are with Sandy Johnson. And of course, if you are on the Facebook forums or on Sprinter forums, anything like that, you have more than likely seen her name as uh, everybody seems to go to you, Sandy, when they have any sort of electricity question. But welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Randa, for having me. Yeah, so let's just get a little bit now because uh, you and I met, um, well, we met digitally anyway through email. Um, I don't know. It seems like it was a year or two ago, and uh, obviously we talk a lot because we both have the same interest in lithionics batteries and upgrading our RVs to where we don't have to be plugged into power poles, things like that. But right. uh, what? Uh, so how do you know all about this electricity? Give a little bit about your electricity background. Well, I, you know, I, I don't really have any, you know, training or anything. I mean, I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer and spent most of my career in the nuclear industry. Uh, and when I retired, you know, eight years ago, I bought a leisure, you know, like lots of people, uh, because I had dogs and I wanted to keep my dogs with me. And I, you know, I wanted to see the United States because we have a beautiful country. Um, so I bought a leisure and, you know, I'd say within the first six months, you know, you start having problems <laughs> with different things. And, mm -hmm. you know, I realized that, um, you know, RV shops really aren't going to help you. I mean, you know, they'll take your money, but you're going to walk away disappointed. And so, you know, mm -hmm. after, about the third, after about the third attempt of trying to use an RV shop, you know, I, I, I said to myself, um, you know, I'm either going to have to become an RV technician or I'm going to sell this thing because, you know, I mean, that's really where I felt I was at. And, you know, I didn't want I didn't want to sell it. I mean, I basically just got it. And I, you know, I, I wanted to learn it and figure out how to enjoy it. And so I started doing research. Uh, I joined the Sprinter Source Forum because there's a, a Unity section, very, very active uh, with, you know, lots of people to give you advice and help. Um, they didn't have Facebook back then when, you know, I 
uh, had my RV or I would have used the Facebook group. Um, but anyway, so, you know, I basically school of hard knocks had to figure stuff out myself. And then, you know, as I did, you know, start to figure things out, you also start to figure out what your camping style is, what things you would like. Um, and, you know, one of the the things I really hated is every time, you know, I had four dogs at the time when I bought my RV and, you know, every time you stop, you basically have to start the generator because, you know, they get hot. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the rig heats up pretty fast. Um, and you know, and I didn't want them to, you know, be hot. So I would start up the generator and, you know, it's noisy and yet, you know, you have to remember, do you have enough propane, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, you know, I discovered lithionics batteries, and I really uh, liked the lithionics battery because, you know, I live in South Carolina, and it does uh, it does get below freezing in South Carolina. I mean, we, you know, have sometimes have a low of 18 degrees. So I wanted a battery that had, you know, a heater, and, you know, I just didn't see that, that out, you know, that technology out there. And then I learned about lithionics and I'm like, wow, this is great. I can have this, this very powerful battery completely fill the space of my battery box, you know, so I'm getting the most power per square inch in the battery box. Uh, I can, you know, replace my inverter and with a 3000 watt inverter and be able to run the air conditioner off the battery. So now I don't have to start up that stupid generator every time. Um, and, you know, so I went with lithionics, you know, for lots of reasons that everybody else picks them because it, it's just such a good battery. And, and the other, the other requirement that I wanted was I wanted the battery to be smarter than the human because, you know, I'm mm-hmm. going to do something. <laughs> I mean, I had flooded batteries, I've had AGM batteries, so I know the human is going to do something to ruin the battery. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just human nature. It just happens. And that was another thing I liked about the lithionics battery is, you know, it, you know, it protects itself from the humans and that's wonderful. So, you know, wanting that, you know, again, I had to, you know, I have to say, well, who's going to install this for me? Well, I'm going to have to figure it out because, You know, you just can't trust other people to do it. So, you know, then I started learning and, you know, helping other people. That that's really how I learned the most is I helped other people do the installations them their installations and I would collaborate with them and you know, every time I did one I would learn something new. And then I eventually felt that I, you know, could be confident enough to do the whole job all by myself and I did it. Everything, you know, worked perfectly when I, you know, turned them all on, turned all my switches on. And, you know, then, you know, after I did that and I was satisfied, I was like, okay, well, you know, how can I help, you know, can I help other people like myself who want to be able, you know, who could do this themselves and, you know, want, want these kind of upgrades for their rig. And so that's just how I, you know, yeah. My journey, well, what, basically. what I think is funny, I, I think what's funny is you said, well, I don't have any really formal training, but yet you're a mechanical engineer in the nuclear sector. So <laughs> I think you're more than well qualified to, to wire up a, a battery. So, um, well, you know, this this podcast and this video is going to be all about, we, we ask some people to uh, send in some questions because this seems to be a constant you know, people talking about upgrading their their batteries. There's so many people. You see so many posts. I feel so sorry for them. It says, my, my battery didn't last through the night, or I had my CPAP machine on, or I had my, my heater on, my fan on, and it didn't last through the night. So uh, so we have a collection, and we have some, some questions here uh, that people have sent in that we are going to answer and hopefully educate more people about lithium. Um, and so and let me say one thing, just real quick disclaimer. Now, lithionics obviously is a battery of your choice for you. It's a battery of choice for me. Um, lithionics actually asked my company to become a uh, authorized dealer. So, so, so I want to just say that right now. My main thing with this is just get the battery that's best for you. 
um, in your upgrade if if you if it doesn't have to necessarily be with the Onyx. Uh, but of course, Sandy and I both recommend that. But I just wanted to put that out there as well. Um, that you know, just do an upgrade, and I think you'll you'll be happy if you choose with the Onyx. Fantastic. So, anyway, so Sandy, are you ready for some questions? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so Mike sent in this question right here, uh, and they are still waiting on their LTV like so many people and probably trying to figure out exactly what kind of upgrades they're going to do. It says, I heard Sandra mention the new Lithionic 630 amp hour battery coming out. Is it an option not to get a generator from LTV? And if so, without the generator, how hard is it to get two of those new ones and how easy will it be able to do that? Thinking with maybe two 3,000 watt inverters. Now, I know you have two 3,000 watt inverters. So tell us about putting in batteries in lieu of a generator and two of okay. those inverters. Okay. Uh uh, Lithionics is releasing two new single batteries, large capacity batteries. One is called a GTX 630 amp hour battery, and I think you have that one on your website. Uh, I, I think people can get that, you know, today. And it, its uh, its shape is basically 20 inches by 12 inches by 11, and it weighs 128 pounds. And it has an internal BMS and an internal heater. Uh, So basically, it's, you know, like I'm going to say an all-in-one compact battery. And then the 660, which uh, Mike is asking about, uh, I don't believe it's been released yet, um, but, you know, I, I think you can order it. Anyway, uh, soon, it, weighs yes. mm-hmm. it weighs 125 pounds, and it's about 26 inches by 8.5 inches by 11 inches. Um, the difference with that battery is it has an external BMS. So you basically buy a separate BMS module that you connect to that battery, um, You know, so it's like a two-part battery. But that's a good system, and somebody had asked, you know, the difference between an internal and an external BMS, which, you know, I can uh, talk to later. Um, But that's basically the two batteries that, the two single large capacity batteries that uh, Lithionics is, you know, is putting, releasing as new batteries, um, you know, now. Uh, With regard to uh, the generator, uh, currently, Leisure has the generator as an option. I, I have heard people, you know, talk or, or say that Leisure was going towards, you know, installing one or the other. It wasn't going to be an option, but today it is an option. I looked on their website; it's still an option. The propane generator is six thousand dollars. The diesel generator is eleven thousand um, dollars. So, yeah, I mean, you definitely can choose not to put in a generator. Uh, I know from other people who have not gotten a generator that Leisure actually um, finishes the generator bay, uh, you know, just like all your other exterior storage compartments. You know, it's it's closed in. It has carpet. looks just like all your other uh, storage compartments. Um, so, yes. So, yeah, you could definitely, you know, do without the generator, and you could put in, you know, one or two of these uh, six six. 660 batteries for sure because you know they're long and thin and i'm guessing that compartment is going to be you know at least 26 inches long so uh and then as far as that external bms you might you know have to um use one of the adjoining compartments for you know that and you know any other components that you might be you know installing if you're going to do solar you might want to move your solar controller to that you know, to, you know, that uh, adjoining bay, you know, so you are going to have to, you know, make, make some decisions and, you know, some modifications, how you want to use the generator compartment and any other adjoining compartments. Uh, Tell tell us about the two inverters. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting to that. I have, I do have dual inverters, uh, but they're not, I, I wouldn't say they're necessary if you're, just going with the standard leisure stuff. 
because, you know, most of the leisure appliances are propane. You know, you have the propane cooktop, you got the three-way refrigerator, you know, you can use it on propane. Um, you know, so as far as an inverter goes, you know, the inverter is only, uh, basically the inverter only changes battery power to residential power. So a 3,000 watt inverter is going to be able to power your microwave, your air conditioner, and your outlets. I mean, that, those, that's all that gets supplied by shore power generator power or now inverter power. So, you know, I don't know, I can't say that I would say that you need two inverters if you're just staying with the standard leisure appliances. Now, there is one kicker um, with the 3000 watt inverter, you know, and running the air conditioner and the microwave. I mean, both of those things are high amp draw items, so you can't run them simultaneously. You know, so you can run the air conditioner. If you run the air conditioner, you need to turn the air conditioner off to use the microwave or you're, you're going to get an overload situation. Um, but the reason I installed two inverters is I've replaced all my appliances. I mean, basically, I, everything I have runs off of electricity. I have an induction cooktop. I have a compressor refrigerator that can, you know, run straight off the battery, or it can run off of one, 120 residential power. Um, I, I put in a different microwave. You know, I just have a microwave only. I don't have the microwave uh, convection, you know, oven thing. Uh, I use a space heater instead of the furnace, you know, so so I want to be able to run all those things, and I want to be able to run the air conditioner simultaneously with all those things. So that's why I installed two inverters, so I could do that. But, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not really sure that's, you know, something that, that the typical leisure person in a standard leisure would really need. So, you know, people need to think okay, so that just, out. So just bit. to be clear, yeah, so just to be clear, the only reason that you would want two 3,000-watt inverters is if you wanted to run, say, the microwave and the air conditioner at the same time or yes. the air conditioner and basically everything in your coach at the same time. Right. Yeah, and like I said, okay. so then I would uh, like I said the everything, you know, people need to understand that really what an inverter does. Okay, the inverter has two functions. It converts battery power, which is 12 volt direct current to residential power, you know, 120 volt alternating current like you have in your house. And so mm -hmm. uh, it's only going to run. I mean, if you look at your breaker box, the only thing that shore power, generator power, or inverter power can run, residential power, are your outlets, the microwave, and the air conditioner. That's it. Everything else is, is powered by the battery. Everything else is, is 12 volt. So, you know... Uh, I have people, you know, while well, we see people posting all the time, um, you know, my fan won't run. Uh, why is the inverter must be broken? No, you're, you know, this is the test you need to do. Okay, I have a fan in the bathroom. Is it plugged into an outlet? Is it the air conditioner? Is it the microwave? If the answer is no, it runs off of the battery. So, you know, that's something that people really need to understand is what the inverter is powering, what shore power is powering, what the battery is powering. So, you know, outlets, air conditioner, microwave, that's residential power. That's what the inverter gives you from the battery. The other thing the inverter does is it uses shore power or generator power to charge your batteries, but only when you're connected to shore power or you're turning on your generator. So so anyway, so yes, dual 3000 watt inverters would allow you to run the air conditioner and the microwave simultaneously. If you had a hair dryer plugged into the outlet, if you had a space heater plugged into the outlet, you could use those simultaneously with the air conditioner running off the other 3000 watt inverter. And that's the way I use my my dual inverters. I have the air conditioner. I use the 
I use one 3000 watt inverter to run the air conditioner and do the battery charging. And I use the other inverter to run everything else. Um, let's okay, see so else. for the... So yeah, so for the main people, just one inverter is going to be fine. I as long as you're so. good with turning off, yeah, high-powered, you know, unless you want to run high-powered yeah. at the same time. Okay, so let's go on to the next question. Pauline asks, I know units have installed surge protector. My question is, would external surge protector for campground electrical pedestal be worth the investment rather than be safe than sorry and avoid expensive downtime of the LTV one needing repair? So should you use them at the same time, the one internal and the one external, or no? Well, I mean, I hate to say it, but yes. And it's because Leisure installs their surge protector in such ridiculously hard-to-find places. And the surge protector has a little window on it, and you have to be able to read a code to understand, you know, why is power not coming into my coach when I'm plugged in? Well, first you have to go on a, you know, Easter egg hunt to find the darn thing. And then it's in such a crazy place that, you know, you'd have to be a contortionist expert to try to get in there to see the window. So, you know, I mean, Leisure basically makes that cert, installs that surge protector to where it's not usable. So, you know, by all means, people should have a surge protector that they can see that they can use. So if you want to plug one into the pedestal and then, you know, plug your coach into that, I mean, I use um, a surge guard, you know, the uh, top of the line surge guard that I plug into the pedestal and the little window, you know, it tells you, uh, you know, you have reverse polarity, you know, bad ground, whatever it is, you can see it right there on the on the um, surge protector that you that I plug into the pedestal, and then I can take action. Um, you know, I, uh, to me, I don't know why Leisure doesn't spend another $20 to buy the surge protector that has the remote um, display, so then they could put it someplace where where the where leisure owners could see it and use it, and then they wouldn't have to worry about having a second surge protector. So you know, the LTV, I, hate, LTV, I hate to say it, but I great, agree with great, the second surge protector. So there's a great suggestion for LTV. Get get the remote for sure. Um, so. Okay, so that does make sense. Now, I will say in two years of mine, I've only had one time where I had to rip apart all of my cushions in my back couch to get down to see what the problem was. So, But it I, it was a pain to do. Yeah. And I only... Yeah, I only use I only use the ex internal one. I don't have an external one. All right. So next question is from Bill. He says a pros and cons of internal or external BMS for that Lithionic six uh, sixty that you're talking about. So six sixty has an external, six thirty has all internal. So right. what's the difference? Pros and cons. Well, the main, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep it simple. I mean, the main difference is the. Batteries that have an external BMS, number one, that external BMS is very robust. Uh, you know, the ones that are that are inside the, you know, internal BMS batteries, you know, they're, they're a little bit more sensitive. I mean, you know, we went through that inrush current issue, um, and, and Lithionics has, you know, um, it, uh, beefed up the internal wiring, you know, to uh, and and change their um, firmware to be able to handle inrush current on the internal BMS batteries. So an, an external BMS battery, you know, the external BMS is, is more robust. It can handle uh, inrush current of inverters. Uh, the other benefit that it has is you can actually plug in um, Lithionics has uh, what they call a battery combiner that goes between the BMS and the however many batteries you might want to have. But basically, you just like plug, literally, like plugging into your outlet, you plug in uh, as many batteries, you know, if you have a multi multiple battery system, you plug them into this combiner, and then it plugs into that BMS, and that BMS tells you everything you know need to know about all the batteries, about the multiple batteries, versus the internal BMS batteries, like the 3, 315 or the 630, 
if you had multiple ones of those, uh, you have to call them up separately. Like on the Lithionics app, they'll all be listed separately. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to call up each one and, you know, see what's going on. You have to remember in your mind, you know, that you have two batteries. And so each battery, you know, is going to show like 50 amps of draw. So you have to add those together to know you have a, you know, a total 100 amp of draw. Whereas the external BMS, it manages multiple batteries and, you know, integrates them and gives you one picture about what's going on in a multiple battery situation. Um, but like I said, it does require that you, you have, you know, like different modules, you know, so you're just going to have basically a battery with, with cells and then you're going to have a module that you, you know, plug multiple batteries into, and then you're going to have the mo the external BMS module, uh, you know, mm -hmm and then wired into your coach kind of a thing. Whereas the uh, internal BMS batteries, you know, they're basically self-contained. So, you know, it has the, uh, B, you know, the BMS inside the battery. It has a heater inside the battery. Um, and, you know, the, the complicated thing about having multiple uh, internal BMS batteries is, you know, you don't have a battery, a simple battery combiner like you do with the external BMS system where you can just plug in multiple batteries and, you know, it, it all it's all integrated and manages. With the internal BMS batteries, you have to buy, you know, bus bars. So you have to buy a positive bus bar and a negative bus bar. You have to wire, individually wire all your batteries to that bus bar, to those bus bars. Then you have to wire your coach into the bus bars, you know, so it's it you know it can be more complicated trying to wire multiple battery system with internal BMS batteries. So those are kind of you know that's kind of the simple difference. Um, so you know you need you know people who are are designing multiple battery systems for their uh, leisure. You know the real question is space. You know how much space do you have? Yeah for those additional external BMS modules compared to the space required for the internal and the bus bars and the wiring, blah, blah, blah. But basically, yeah. that's so in a you, nutshell, yeah, that's so I would. Yeah, and I, I got pricing for that new 660 and the uh, and the um, external, and it is more expensive to go this route too. And and so yeah, the problem is with a leisure, where would you put it? But if you have a different RV, say a fifth wheel, or or is something in that sense, of course, then that and you plan on being completely um, self sufficient with battery, you could totally fit that as well. All right, so the next question is from Virginia. She says, should I install a new Kize? 50 amp DC to DC charger when I install the ample start. My logic says yes, since the Sterling, which comes with a leisure travel van, only puts out 28 amps. The Kize gives you more power. So what do you think? Well, um, I hesitate to tell new owners that they, you know, need to tear out the Sterling and put in a, a Kise. Uh, just because they don't know what their camping style is yet. I mean, the Sterling DC to DC charger really puts out a maximum of like 24 amps. When you're driving, you know, that's alternator charging. Uh, if you have 400 watts of solar, you know, that's about another 25, 27 amps. So between the two, you're getting, if you're driving on a sunny day, you're getting 50 amps coming in. Uh, to charge your batteries, which, you know, 50 amps per hour to charge your batteries. I mean, you know, that's that's decent charging. Um, you know, so I, I'm very reluctant to say, you know, you need more power because to me the reality is you need to understand your camping style. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, what really battery charging you need because, you know, that's up to you. You need to understand how you're going to use your battery. I mean, if, if you know, you're making stops and you're like completely depleting your battery, you know, by running the air conditioner for, you know, however many hours you've stopped and then, you know, you're going to get, get in your rig and drive again, then, yeah, you're, you're going to want something that's, you know, going to charge up the batteries a little bit faster while you're driving. 
Um, and so you might want to go to, you know, a key say where you're going to get about 48 amps. I mean, you're going to get double the battery charging while driving from the alternator. Um, you know, but really my advice is, you know, new owners, particularly people who've never had an RV, you know, I, I'm just not going to say, you know, throw out the Sterling and get, uh, get a key say just because it's more power. I mean, you might not need it. And, and if you're doing these installations yourself, they're pretty complicated. Um, and, you know, do you want all that stress when you're a brand new owner? I mean, you haven't even driven the thing yet. You, you, you're just taking, you know, you're waiting for it to come, you know, with you're, you're all excited. Don't you want to just get in it and use it and, and figure out what you need? So, you know, I'm definitely for, yeah. Uh, putting in, you know, a powerful battery because, you know, the battery is always, it's the heart. I mean, you need power. Um, but, and if you know you want to run the air conditioner, okay, it's obvious. Oh, you got to have a 3000 watt inverter. So to me, uh, you know, for, for me, a Lithionics 315 and a 3000 watt inverter would be the very first thing that I would do. But after that, you know, I would just use it and see what I think. I mean, you know, so yes, it's it's more power, but but I can't I can't tell Virginia if she needs it. Virginia needs to tell Virginia if she needs it, and it needs to be based on using your leisure and understanding if you need it. Yeah. So, and I will say that I just have my Sterling, and I have never once you know, needed more thought. Wow, I wish this charged faster. I'm always because we'll always stop for lunch or or something, turn the air conditioner on for 30 minutes to an hour on a road trip. And I mean, it charges it back up by the time we get to our destination anyway. Yeah. So I personally have never needed it. So I would say, unless you're just wanting, you know, to go, you know, as much as you can, I, I personally have not needed it. Okay. I mean, then I mean, Andy, to right. Me, to huh? me, it's, it's, it's something you can always add. I mean, you know, you don't need it yeah. from day one. You you can do it day 30, day 100. I mean, it's something you can always do down the road. Once you figure out you need that. Yeah. All right. So Andy puts in, for those who would like to avoid a generator, is a second alternator an option for charging the house batteries? So will that work in a uh, in a sprinter? Uh, there are... There, there is there there is a second generator option for a sprinter, but it also requires that you get what is called the high idle option. The sprinter engine must run idle at greater than eighteen hundred RPMs, or you have emissions issues. You have and you know you have operational issues with the engine if it basically isn't running. I'm going to say hot. So it you can do it with a sprinter, but but I really would uh, tell people, okay, run the generator, get a feel for how loud that is, then get in your Unity and run the engine and press on the gas until it goes over eighteen hundred RPM, and you decide which is less noisy. Because I'm going to tell you, if you sit in a sprinter and you're pressing the gas to get it to go over 1,800 RPM, it's loud. So, you know, so the so the alternatives for, you know, you know, engine idle alternator charging aren't really good for a sprinter. Um, but they, you know, but conversely, on the Wonder, there there are no Ford restrictions on the Ford Transit. So you definitely can install a second generator on the Ford Transit, the and um, and or yeah, second alternator, and um, even on the diesel Ford Transit or just the new yeah, gas. Yeah, yeah. There's no limitations on okay. either one of them. Well, there you uh, go. Wonder owners. Yeah. Another reason I mean, and you, and you can idle, so you know you don't have to rev up the yeah. engine. I mean, it's idling is quiet uh, on the Ford, so you know. It's a better alternative on the Wonder versus the um, Unity. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, if you can do that, definitely on a Wonder, I think that's a, that's a great, except for fuel prices right now, I'm not sure if the, you'd want to sit there and idle. 
And then, okay, so this is a question. Thinking upgrading to possibly 630 amp hours of lithium, 3,000 inverter, AC soft start, and 500 watts of solar. Um, now, they want to be able to boondock with a regular 120 house current available. Could be 15 or 20 amp circuit. 90 degree weather and a dog in cool comfort while we are away from the RV. I'm concerned about the AC possibly blowing the shore power circuit breaker at some point. One more request related to the same issue. When upgrading as above, can the system be set to automatically go to inverter battery power if shore power is lost for some reason? If air conditioner is running, would it continue to run after the auto switch to battery inverter or would it need to be restarted manually? So pet safety right there. Um, I personally, I, I have never uh, had, I've never experienced a breaker trip of any kind. I mean, anywhere running, you know, being plugged in at the campground, running the air conditioner, running the generator. I've never had that ever happen to me. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen, but I, I think it's, it's pretty, a pretty remote uh, possibility. One thing that I do, I mean, there, there isn't anything, you know, there's an auto gen start, um, that the new leisures are coming with if you get the propane generator. So you can set the temperature in the coach, uh, when it gets to a certain temperature, the generator will start, you know, to keep supplying the air conditioner. Um, you can, you know, that's available, but, uh, there isn't anything like that you know, from an inverter perspective. Uh, now, if you're on shore power, then you have a, an automatic transfer switch in the inverter. So if the shore power is lost, the inverter will automatically switch to battery power, you know, and continue to supply the coach. I mean, it's, it's in milliseconds. So the air conditioner does not turn off, you know, nothing turns off. I mean, you're not even aware. I'm, I, I mean, I have been in situations where, I've lost shore power, and I didn't even know it until I started getting a battery alarm that I was approaching 10%, you know, on my battery. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what happened? So then, you know, you're running around trying to restore power. Um, so, you know, so that really is invisible, you know, to, to people. So the automatic transfer switch is something that you can rely on as, you know, a safety feature if you lose shore power. But the one thing that I do when I leave leave my rig with my pets in them i have a little baby monitor camera that i that's hooked to wi-fi i turn what i turn my tablet into a hot spot and i hook that camera to my uh, wi-fi hot spot of my tablet and then i can use my phone to see you know to monitor with the camera what's going on with my with my you know dogs and then i have a uh, a lighted um uh, temperature gauge that is, you know, basically hanging right by where the camera is. And, and I can scroll the camera around and, you know, look at the dogs, look at the whole rig, look up at the temperature, look up at the light on the air conditioner and the thermostat, you know, see what that says. Um, so I can monitor them when I'm away to make sure that, you know, nothing has gone wrong. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, and I don't need to immediately try to get back, you know, to help them. And, you know, in, in the eight years that I've been doing this, I've never, ever had an issue uh, where I lost power and my dogs, you know, the cooling for my dogs was not maintained. I've, I've never had that. Yeah, um, I, I use a waggle, which is kind of, I mean, it, it alerts me if the temperature uh, exceeds a certain certain thing. So I definitely, I'm, and you do too, say if you leave pets in the in your RV, definitely have some sort of way because you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, even your yeah, air conditioner I, could just stop working you know, on its own, yeah. not even a power issue. So, so definitely do that. All right, Sandy. So we've been going here now for a little bit over 30 minutes. So um, is there anything you want to close with? I know people well, are always wanting to know about electricity. I, I did want to say uh, what there was a person's question. Uh, uh, interim was the name of the the person that sent in a question, and he he or she wanted to know if there was a Midwest lithionics installer that I would recommend. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, I do know of one, you know, I, I'm not sure what the definition of Midwest is, but there is a company called Boundless Power Systems in Mount Vernon, Ohio, and uh, the owner is Ian Shelbourne, and he, I mean, I've had lots of leisure owners contacting me with nothing but praise for the system that he has installed for them. Uh, he's, he does solar. He does lithionics batteries, a lithi- lithionics uh, dealer installer. He, he uses all Victron components, I believe. So, you know, that would be a Victron MultiPlus, you know, Victron solar control, you know, all Victron um, uh, components, which, you know, are top of the line. The Victron stuff is are the top of the line components. Um, but anyway, so I wanted, you know, to put that out there for – you know, people who might be able to utilize uh, somebody in the Ohio area, if that would if that would help anybody. Yeah, well, Sandy and I both really recommend Lithionics, but again, it's not about the brand. I mean, uh, you know, Lithionics is a premium brand, uh, but if you're just going to upgrade from lead acid or AGM, you know, you know, I don't. I mean, really recommend Lithionics, but the main thing is just getting more power and trying to unhook from that power pole as best as you can. And so then, Sandy, you and I did a great video. I say you and I. You did the whole work. You did all the work. I just filmed it and edited it. <laughs> so uh, of installing a Lithionics uh, as well as a 3,000-watt inverter, how easy it is in a 2020 or later leisure travel van. Um, now, that was a Unity. Uh, are Wonders just as easy to do this Do this switch out? Yes, I uh I was um, working with a company called Specialty Van City in Fort Pierce, Florida, about two weeks ago, and uh, we actually we actually did a wonder. I mean, that was my first wonder. It, you know, it, it's very much like the Unity. The only difference was actually leisure. In this, uh, I, I think this was a 2021 Wonder RL. And uh, Leisure installs the batteries, even the lead-acid batteries, right next to the inverter in that side compartment. They don't, they don't have batteries in the step compartment. So um, the, the great thing about it is, you know, basically that compartment is already dedicated to batteries and an inverter. And it's long enough, if you take out the, the separation wall, you know, there at the inverter, you know, between the inverter and the rest of the uh, and the batteries. If you take that wall out, a Lithionics 315 slides right in there, perfect. I mean, it, you know, there's actually, you know, like two inches, so there's definitely space between the battery and the inverter. And um, having a lithion, I mean, you don't have to put the wall back. Having a lithionics battery right next to the inverter, that is not. There's no kind of safety issue with that. Um, The reason that Leisure has the wall there with AGM batteries is that, you know, AGM batteries, flooded wet cell batteries, they off-gas. They're, you know, basically open to the atmosphere. And an inverter will throw sparks when it's operating. And so that could create, you know, that's a flammability issue, so that's why there is a wall there. But you don't have that issue with lithium batteries, um, you know, lithium batteries can be right next to, uh, you know, an inverter, you know, an inverter, sparks, you know, anything like that. Uh, and a lithionics battery is UL tested and certified. I mean, it is, you know, flame tested. It's uh, crash tested. I mean, it, it goes through uh, every kind of testing to receive UL, you know, listing, UL certification for safety, for fire safety, for, you know, uh, vehicle safety, everything. Um, so there's absolutely no issues with having a lithionics battery right next to the inverter in a wonder compartment. Well, that's great. All right, Sandy. Well, thanks for joining me on this and answering these questions that everybody is always wondering. And thanks for all of the work you do as well. Uh, um, you know, I mean, you installed, I think, 11 or 12 smart shunts at our rally in Florida, and you were just helping everybody, and you still answer questions. You write all these guides. So you're a huge help. So thanks for everything you do for the LTV community. So I'm, I'm glad I can help. I mean, I'm glad I can share, you know, what I've learned. Yeah, well, you are, and I have learned a ton from you. So thank you. So you're welcome. <laughs> all right. That's Sandy Johnson, but thanks you. And uh, I may see you in Florida coming up, so.
yeah, I'm, I'm going to be at the rally. It All should right. be fun. We'll see you then. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. All right. Bye.